Hey there, welcome to the Top Listing Agent Show, Shadi Bazzi here, and this week's episode, number 28, is a very spontaneous episode that we did, you see every single Friday on the, uh, inside of our private Facebook group, which you could check out for free at toplistingagentgroup.com, uh, what I do is I bring on a guest, someone from their group, and I give them about a 30-minute free one-on-one coaching session. And this week we had a guest that wasn't really supposed to be the guest of the week. Um, I had another guest scheduled for the show. That guest canceled like 30 minutes prior to the beginning of the show. And I did a post on Facebook saying, who would like to be our guest this week? Jerry raised his hand. Um, The intention was just to keep this conversation inside the group. But the conversation just had way too many nuggets that I just felt that it's the right thing for me to do. Uh, is share it with all our audience across all the platforms, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, and the podcast right here. So that's what we are doing. So enjoy episode number 28. Take care. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Top Listing Agent Show, the place to be to stay on the cutting edge of what it takes to sell more homes in less time. Each week, your host, Shadi Bazzi, will share with you the best skill sets, systems, and strategies so you can become a top listing agent. And now, let the show begin. Welcome to Next Level Coaching Fridays, and uh, today's guest is uh, Jerry Jerry? Macias. Macias. There we go. Got to get that Cias at the end correctly. So, uh, Jerry just, um, you know, raised his hand a couple of minutes ago and said, hey, I'd like to take advantage of this, you know, free coaching call opportunity. Uh, I did have another guest scheduled that that had to cancel out, you know, during last minute um, for whatever odd reasons uh, or personal reasons she had to cancel out. So, it's all good. So, it's meant uh, for me and Jerry to be having this conversation. So, we're going to be having that conversation. There you go. All right. So again, uh, there really is no structure for how we are doing these Friday calls. Uh, All I want to do is just have a conversation with whoever comes on live and, you know, figure out what it is that, you know, they're up to in in their business and uh, offer them some sound advice, insights, strategies, skills, et cetera, uh, to help them go to the next level. So Jerry, um, tell us a little bit about you. Who are you? Who are you? Where do you work, et cetera? Okay, so I, so Jerry Macias, I've I've been in real estate for two years, uh, retail retail sales for two years. Um, first year mainly, uh, you know, just working on the structures, identifying, you know, the, figuring out the game, understanding what sellers are looking for and buyers. So I worked a couple of buyers in the beginning, then I realized that sellers was was the name of the game. So I started going after sellers. What I realized is that sellers take a little bit longer to turn than buyers. Um, so I just got to, had to figure out a system to follow up consistently with my prospects and my clients and, and so forth. So we did that. Um, I came from the insurance business, so that wasn't new to me. Um, and then I just brought it on over to real estate. And, and I think uh, last, and it's been, it's been well, it's been, it's been a good two years for sure. So. Very good. How'd you do your first year? I'm just curious, like your first year trying to figure out everything and, Put systems in place, et cetera. How did mm-hmm. you do your first year? See, my first full year, like going full time, we we did uh, seventeen million in volume. Okay. And we did thirty three transactions. Okay. So yeah. 30, 33 deals in the first year. Second year, how how did you do the second year, or is this your second? This year? is my second year. Right now, we're at fourteen million in in production, and about I want to say twenty five transactions. Okay. Um, we're looking, yeah, 26 transactions. We're looking to end the year around 50 or so. Okay. Yeah. So on, on track for 50. Yeah. On track for 50. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And, uh, okay. Well, not a bad beginning the first two years, not a bad beginning in comparison to how most people begin. Most people begin by doing, you know, three, four, five deals their first year. You, mm-hmm. you definitely done a lot more than that. And you guys, you know, track to do 50 this year. Yeah. Uh, is is that was that your original goal this year, fifty? No, it wasn't. Okay. Um, we wanted to go one hundred and fifty okay. to one hundred and eighty. We wanted to do one hundred million dollars in volume. I know it's a a pretty big goal. Um, one thing that I was told was, um, create a goal that you for sure can reach fifty percent of, and then and then make an adjustment from there. So, 
we knew for sure we can reach about 40 million but right now it's just some you know right now we're 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 probably gonna end up like around 25 30 so Got it. Right now. yeah okay and um you know you keep on using the words we who is we so you know our audience whoever is listening to this understands when you say we what do you exactly mean so we i have a business partner uh sean which you know well um mm-hmm. he's mainly focusing on lead generation he's a, he's a master at lead generating okay and um i have and when i say we it's it's a team effort you know to get these listings so i have a, an operations director who manages all the back-end systems and then we have a, a virtual assistant who helps her with all the admin stuff that, that she may need help with, like tedious stuff like data input, marketing flyers, anything that doesn't, uh, that takes away from me making money and her being effective talking to clients, um, we give to the VA. So my, my main focus is to get really good at my listing presentation so that when I go, I can take a contract and I bring it over to, um, who, her name's Ida, our operations director, hand over the contract. And I don't really have to get involved anymore. She schedules my, my for sale sign, pictures. She talks to the clients, gives them updates on a weekly basis so that I can focus on getting more, more appointments. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Sean is the lead generation master. Yeah. His, his main job duty is, you know, just generating the leads. Right. And then you're the listing agent. You're the one that goes out there and converts those leads, right? Correct. Got yeah. it. Okay. Do you do anything other than go on listing appointments? Um, I'll go on some buyer appointments, uh, if, if I'm training someone. So that way I am, if I'm training a buyer's agent, I'll, I'll go on some buyer appointments and I'll, and I'll take some buyers. And if it's like an SOI, like a cousin or a, you know, a friend that they really wants to work really close with me, I'll, I'll go on a buyer appointment. Uh, my highest and best use of time should is listing appointments and training and developing other people on my team. Got it. That's, so, that's where I'm gonna get. so your job duty is you're, you're the listing agent and you're also in charge of you know, training other team members. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just taking notes right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- th- this is becoming good. We might have to turn this into a top listing agent show episode. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. Because, I mean, you're already, you know, sharing, you know, some good stuff. Like most people in the real estate business don't think about, you know, you know like the team concept. And yeah. you, you got your team concept. It's like Sean does the lead generation. You know, I go there. I convert the leads. I hand them over to the operations manager and whatever help she needs, you know, we got the virtual assistant. So it's like a streamlined systematic approach, which I'm a big fan of Mm -hmm. having systems in place. You know, one of the things that I always say is if you're too busy to put systems in place, then you're always going to be too busy, but not the kind of busy you want to be. You know what I mean? No, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. So, you know, you, you guys are doing a good job with that. All right. So, what do you personally need the most amount of help in so I can offer that help to you today? You know, um, although we're doing well, you know, sometimes it, it becomes a, a challenge to come in and, and grind it out. And, and you know, I, I think uh, I try to get too creative with my listing presentation sometimes when it's plain and simple. I, I, need, I need some help with my, like I know my listing presentation. Um, however, um, I noticed that I'm, I'm starting to change it and, and I don't know if it's, if I'm getting too personal with it and not, you know, cause there's a fine line between becoming their friend and becoming their realtor. So I, I just want to make sure that I stay in alignment with what I'm trying to accomplish and don't go overboard with being too, too friendly. Mm-hmm. Cause then, then we might shy away business cause they'll, you know, they'll go grab a beer with you, but they won't do a listing with you because right. they don't want to hurt your feelings if something goes bad or something. Right, right. So I guess, I guess the issue is when is per, too personal, too personal, or am I, or is that just a story I'm creating in my head? Um, you know, there are people out there who are looking for a friend because they don't have one. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for them to adopt you as their new friend. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that you got to do is you got to be able to separate, you know, where do I draw the line between, you know, friendship and a business transaction? Mm-hmm. I like the concept of making them feel as if you are their friend authentically mm-hmm. okay, in, in the upfront, do the business deal and then become their friend and they become your advocate Okay. for repeat and referral business. So I'm not against, you know, hanging out with, I mean, I hang out with all my coaching clients, you know, when they're in town, you know, we go out, we have a good time, et cetera. Uh, but then again, I've already set, you know, the boundaries between like, 
uh, I got to put my coaching hat on and, you know, this is my friend hat on and, you know, you got to be able to do the same. Now, yeah. sometimes when you do that, somebody's feelings might get hurt because they may create a story around why you told them whatever it is that you told them. Mm-hmm. But then again, that's their story and you can't be attached to making every single person every single time 100% happy. Mm-hmm. So you, you got to draw the line now. Is this like literally the big issue or is the issue something else? Like, is this something that's happening with every single person or is this something that happens like, you know, one in every four or five people that you do a transaction with? What I'm noticing is that before I used to get, if I would go on four appointments, I would come back with three or two. Okay. Right now I'm coming back with one, if that. So your conversion yeah. rates went down. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. What I did notice, though, is that they call me back a month later, a week, uh, a week later, and then they're like, hey, we're ready to get something going. Okay, then that's not a bad thing. Okay. That's not a bad thing. Now, if you would have said to me, you know, I'm going on four presentations and I'm only converting 25% of them and the other 75% is doing business with someone else, then I'd be concerned. Mm-hmm. But if, if you're going on four listings... See, and, and here's the thing. You're keeping track of your numbers, Jerry, or no? Yeah, we, I, track ev- I, I track everything every day. <laughs> so then what we got to take a look at is, you know, y- your, your conversion rate across the board for the whole entire year. Mm. Because there's people that you presented to two, three months ago that are converting right now. Yeah. So in essence, they weren't a no. They were just a no right now, a yes later on. And I need to know what that percentage is because... Here's the thing. I'll give you an example. For me, as, as a coach, uh, there's people that I talk to, let's say, for example, in January. Mm-hmm. January wasn't the right time for us to work together. Mm-hmm. But they became a client three, four, five, six months later, sometimes a year later. Yeah. Now, when I used to go out and do listing presentations, okay, uh, there were many instances where you know, people just weren't ready. Yeah. But I made sure that I knew that at the end of that listing presentation, the reason I didn't get that listing is because of a condition, whatever that condition may have been. And then I needed to do my, my duty in terms of keeping in touch with them and having a properly follow-up system in place where I continue to provide value to where when they were 100% ready, I was the guy to list the property. And I think that's what's happening with you. If not, I need to know so I can get to the nitty gritty and help you out with it. I think so too. You know, I think so. I think that's what it is. I just, you know, sometimes when you don't have a gauge or you don't have a perspective, you think that you're failing, yeah. right? Because you're going on appointments and I'm thinking like, well, I'm not getting them. And then I noticed that right now a lot of people are, are refinancing. So it's a condition um, that I can't, I can't change their mind on, on them wanting to refi rather than right. selling. Mm-hmm. So it's just, am I, maybe I can do a better pre-qual. Maybe are you looking to refinance, you know, have you considered that option? Um, and I can get that up, up, up front rather than right. finding out the appointment. Right. And I always say we got to keep the best interest of our client no matter what, because we're thinking lifetime value. You know, mm-hmm. this person that you present to, you know, maybe a person that has a financial condition that they need to take care of, like refinance, et cetera. And in the process you know, life takes a turn and they no longer need to sell. Mm -hmm. And if we count that as a strike against them, guess what we do? We ruin the relationship that we've already opened. Mm -hmm. But then again, if we further that relationship and we continue to give value, regardless of whether they ever do a transaction with us, they could refer us to their family member, their coworker, their neighbor. Mm -hmm. And I'd be okay with that. And you got to be okay with that. So we always think lifetime value, but let's dissect this a little bit further. Because you said something about like your listing presentation is fluctuating, okay? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you do it this way, sometimes you do it that way, sometimes you do it another way. Yeah. I'm okay with with all of that. Actually, in my listingsondemand.com course, I I teach that you got to have that level of flexibility. Mm -hmm. But you cannot lose the structure of the listing presentation. Yeah. There's certain points that need to be met no matter what. And you can meet them in any order that you want as long as they're met. And you got to be able to fluctuate, sing, and dance, and go to the left and the right, up and down, and all that good stuff with the client. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. 
So for you, do you have that structure in place to where here's the four or five points that we got to meet every single you know, time that I do a listing presentation? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. I, I mean, I, for what happens is when I sit down with them and I say, okay, so before we get started, you know, I like to review your situation and, and what's important to you about making this move. When they open up, that's where it gets like, bring it back, bring it back. It's what, you know, I want to go here because of this and my grandma, my cousin, and oh yeah, tell me more about your cousin, tell me about your aunt, tell me what, and then we go into this whirlwind of, I don't know how we ended up there. I have right. to bring it back. And then when I bring it back, it's maybe a little bit awkward because now we're talking business and it got very friendly and now we're, we're back to business. Okay, right? so, so, so this is a you thing to where you got to know how to segue, you know, that part right back to the business. Mm-hmm. So, you know, listen, repeat, approve, and ask a question. So I'm thinking, and, and I could be, you know, I mean, I'm not there with you. But I'm thinking that, you know, you're probably asking too many open-ended questions that are leading in the wrong direction. Like the reason that they're going to where they're going is as a result of you saying, tell me a little bit more about that. Tell me a little bit more about that. You got to know when to say, you know what, I can totally understand the position that you are in. And, you know, I feel for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now that I've heard this little portion of your story, um, I just want you to know that I'm 100% committed to making sure I help you with A, B, or C. So let me ask you this question, and then boom, you ask the next question to segue the conversation back to where you want to take it to. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, that's actually now looking back at things. Yeah, that's probably what's happened. That's what that is. What's going on? Too so many now, open-ended questions where I lose control where they take the con- the conversation. So I'm all about asking open-ended questions, but the open-ended questions got to be designed to, you know, for you to steer the conversation to where you want to take it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But now mm-hmm. there's something else I'm thinking about. You know, I'm thinking about Sean. Sean is doing the lead generation. Yes. Who's doing the pre-qualifying? Um, my, my assistant. Okay. Your assistant is doing the pre-qualifying and I'm sure that she's, you know, she's got what, a questionnaire that, you know, she writes mm-hmm. up, she gives you the questionnaire and then you go there and then you just review some of the questions with them that they said. Mm-hmm. at the listing appointment etc right okay so up to the listing appointment they've never met you and or talked to you right they have talked to me okay when uh when i'm doing the lead follow-up so if i'm doing the lead follow-up and then so sean's doing lead generation he's generating the leads with uh with uh our isas who call okay and that isa then that lead comes to me and my job is to nurture it so as i nurture it I'm nurturing the lead like, hey, Mr. Scheller, you spoke with my, um, my associate, uh, Michael, you know, who's calling. Mm-hmm. And he, he mentioned to me, you're looking to sell your home and you were, this is what you were looking to do. Tell me more about that. You know, and then we get into the conversation. Okay, sounds like the next step is to get together so we can discuss your options and see how we can get you there. Boom. And then when I set the appointment, then I'll say, hey, by the way, Mr. Scheller, my assistant's going to call you the day before to ask you a couple questions to better prepare for the appointment. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Then they call and then I get the sheet and then I go. Got it. Okay. So one thing I would love for you to try out that's a little bit, see, sometimes we got to try different approaches to see Mm -hmm. which one is the right one. Uh, What I would highly encourage you to do for, let's say the next 10 people so we can have a good gauge Mm -hmm. is instead of having your assistant do the pre-qualifying, Mm -hmm. I'd love for you to do the pre-qualifying and then compare those 10 appointments against the previous 10 appointments that you went on and see if your conversion rate is improving at the listing presentation because you're that much more prepared mentally to show up for the listing presentation versus just reading a piece of paper, Mm -hmm. which is not, which is, you know, kind of like breaking the current system that you have, but Mm -hmm. possibly could enhance the current system that you have. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely give that a shot. Okay. Okay. And when you are on the, on those listing appointments, okay. When you are on the listing appointments, do you mind sharing with me? What is your structure for the listing appointment? Like, you know, and you know, for us, we have a five-step structure that that's what I teach in my listings on demand course. It's a five-step structure to do a listing presentation. Mm-hmm. Do you have like, you know, step number one, which is obviously we all have the same step number one, which is the introduction. Yeah. And then step, do you mind walking me through what yours is? So I could, 
you know, yeah, see definitely. what I can do to say, maybe you should try this on instead of that. Yeah, I actually have it recorded. It's on YouTube. Um, I can send it to you also. But normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll knock, if I knock on the door, hey, Chatty, how you doing? You know, it's Jerry. Um, you know, we spoke and uh, we had an appointment at 6 and it's 6 p.m. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, come on in. So perfect, perfect. So how's the wife? How's, how's everything? And whatever we talked about in that conversation, mm -hmm. kind of bring it up a little bit. Okay, perfect. So, Chatty, um, before we get started, do you mind giving me a tour of the property so that I know what I'm going to be working with? Yeah, sure. So they give me a tour of the home. That's when I use that time to build relationships. I see soccer pictures, golfing pictures, fishing pictures. Oh, no way. Well, tell me more about that fishing trip. Oh, well, one of my friends caught a big tuna. Okay. And then I'll start joking around like, I'm sure you have something in the fridge for me or something. You know, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we do. And so funny that, equals money. Yeah. So we, we, I do that. I said, perfect. Um, do you mind if we use a kitchen table so that I can lay everything out and, and uh, explain to you your, you know, what we're going to talk about? Yeah, let's go there. Um, once I sit down with them, I asked, I always ask for a cup of water. Okay. I'm always asking for a cup of water. I said, actually, do you mind? Um, do you, can I, can I have a cup of water, please? And then that way I can already start um, ingraining that I'm, that I'm in control. Right. I love that. I love that. That right there is a huge, in, in, I'm sure that you're doing it purposely. Mm -hmm. Okay. But most people really don't know the psychology behind you doing that. Mm -hmm. Is you're already beginning to get them to follow your lead. Yes. Yes, okay. exactly. And that right there is, you know, I, I never shared that in my listing presentation or anything like that, but guess what? Mm -hmm. We're still in that one. Go for it. That's what love we're here it. for. So love it. Love it. Good point. Awesome. Okay. So you sit down and yeah. what do you do? So when I sit down, I have the pre-qualifying questions with me okay. and I have my listing presentation. And I say, so Chatty, before I even get started in, in, in anything, I want to review your information, your uh your you know, where you are, and I want to see actually let me take that back. So I just say I want to review um the information that we have here so that I can better assist you with that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go over the questions that my assistant went over so we can talk about it. Sound fair? Okay. Perfect. Let, let, let's do that. Let's do okay. that. Can, can, can we make up a scenario right now and do a role play on that? Yeah, perfect. Let's do okay, it. Awesome. Let's do uh, it. So, so Chatty, you mentioned uh, to us that you want to move, you want to sell this property so you can get to San Diego, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. And then you told me that you want to go to San Diego because of a new job. Is, is that the case? That is the case. Okay. Tell me more about that. How soon do you need to be there? What's, what, what's uh, taking you there? Is it higher pay? Is it closer to family? What's going uh, on? Yeah, we want to be closer to family. And, you know, obviously my, my, you know, I can relocate my job over there. So. Okay. Closer to family. Is it mother, sister? Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we got a huge family over there. Mother, father, uh, siblings, cousins. Okay. So it's important for you to get closer to your family, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. So awesome. So we're on the same page with that. Number two, I see here that you owe $300,000 on the property. Right. Has that okay. changed? No. Let me stop you right there. Okay. What I would do if I were you is I would expand as much as I possibly can okay. on the motivation. Okay. So here, here, here's one thing you already done in your listing presentation at the beginning is you already began the leadership role by, you know, making requests, requests like the glass of water and having them honor your request. Okay. okay. So now that what we got to do is we got to, we got to interrupt their current state of mind. We don't know what their state of mind was prior to you coming over. Cause we don't know what they're thinking about a real estate agent. We don't know if they're interviewing other agents. We don't know if they're skeptic, if they're afraid, et cetera. And this is going to be an emotional decision. Nine out of 10 times, unless it's an investor, it's a, it's going to be a decision based on emotion. Mm. But what we got to do is we got to reconnect that motivation. And that's like literally step number two in my listing presentation is where I say re-motivate. Okay. Okay. Like in this instance, it's a job transfer. Okay. And closer to the family. Okay. I would ask four questions here. Okay. Okay. And the four questions would be, you know, tell me what is important to you about blank. So in this case, Tell me what is important to you about selling this house. You already know why he wants to sell the house. Yeah. But we can't skip that point because we got to reconnect him. We got to reconnect his mind and heart to trigger yeah. that emotion. So yes. tell me, tell me, so let's do, let's, let's have you write down the four questions then we'll do a role play on that. Okay. Okay. So question number one was, tell me what is important to you about blank. Mm -hmm. Question number two, let's write down, what will blank do for you? Okay. 
So what will fill in a blank do for you? Questions number three and four can go in either order, depending on the, on the topic of conversation. Question mm -hmm. number three could be, and ultimately, what will that do? Okay. And ultimately, what will that do? And then question number four will be the, tell me more about that. Okay. Okay. So let's do a role play on that. And I'm, I'm going to be the agent. I'm going to say to you, Jerry, what is important to you about selling this house? Uh, just get to San Diego with my family. I have a big family out there. It's a little lonely over here. Okay. So yeah. get to San Diego to escape the loneliness and be, you know, around your family. Yes. What will all of that do for you? Well, it would, I didn't even think about that, but it, it'll make me feel a little more secure. You know, if I need, and if I need help with the babysitter, you know, always go to my mom's house, drop them off, probably save some money on, on that. Mm -hmm. um, not have to worry about, you know, you know, if I, if I need some, some help with something, I always have someone to lean on over there. So it's, it's, it's just comforting to know that someone's there. Got it. So what will happen that ultimate level of comfortness to know that your family is there to help you in time of need and you'll be able to save money in the process? Ultimately, what will all of that do for you? It'll give me peace of mind. Okay. Tell me more about that. What do you mean when you say it'll give me peace of mind? Well, you know, just knowing that um, if my babysitter cancels on me, I don't have to miss work. You know, okay. so I've, I've had to do that a couple of times this year. So knowing that I can drop, just drop off my daughter with my uh, mom, it, it'll, it'll make me feel a little bit more safe and I have to get ridden up at work all the time. <laughs> it's like I've been getting. So, Got yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. So do you see where we're going with this now? Yeah. Okay. So now this is a whole different conversation. I got you connected back to the root reasons of why you want to sell this home. Mm -hmm. And I'd be taking notes on some of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'd also be looking at their IQs to see exactly how they process the information so I could give them the presentation in a way that they process the information. Mm. Now, every time I asked you a question, your IQs told me that you're a visual person. Would you agree? Yes. So now I guess what I got to do. I got to do the majority of my listing presentation and, you know, using words that are visual and maybe show you some visuals so you can totally understand my presentation. That's just like a bonus psychological strategy. Do you know how to do that, by the way, or no? Um, what do you mean by that? Like how to access how people process information? Um, no. Okay. Listingsondemand.com teaches you how to do that, brother. Okay. Because <laughs> here's the thing. You know, if, if, if I'm a visual person and you're just speaking in ways to just trigger emotions, okay, how well am I to connect with that? I may not connect because mm -hmm. I need to see it. Mm -hmm. I need to see it. So you got to change your whole entire presentation in that moment to be able to present in a way that I can see exactly what you're talking about. Okay. That makes can, sense. Can, 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 you, can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. I noticed that when people I'm losing them, I pull out my, my flip book, if you will. Because you're a visual person, you think that's going to connect with every single person. Some people don't want to see it. Some people just want to feel it. Mm. Some people just want to hear it. So you got to know. So that, that's a whole other bonus point. We're not going to get into that. But back to the four questions. I just reconnected you to, to, to the why, to your why. Yes. So now I got to begin to incorporate that inside of our listing presentation. So for example, when we get into part three of the listing presentation and we start going through the pricing strategy, okay? And I walk you through, you know, uh, let's say I'm, I'm walking you through the sold comparables. Yeah. And, I, and I'm showing you that, you know, it's taken, you know, just hypothetically speaking, it's taken 125 days to sell a property. And then it's got to go into escrow for, you know, 30, 40 days. So we're talking about six months process. Mm -hmm. I get to reconnect you back to you having to put up you know, with not knowing when you're going to have to cancel work uh, because mm -hmm. of, you know, for the next six months, et cetera. I got to feed that back to you during the listing presentation. I don't know if you do that or not, yeah. but that would be the most killer listing presentation is to feed them back everything that they told you because yeah. that's everything that's important. I, I guess I guess I have to, and, and, I, and I've done this before, um, I guess I have to get away from believing well, I am a salesperson, so I have to get because sometimes when you ask those questions, there's like a knot in your stomach when you're just gonna throw it right back at them. Yeah, right. There's like this knot, and sometimes because of that knot, I don't I don't throw it back at them. 
But I think that's the time that I need to throw that motivation back at them. If I feel well, that, that means I need to do it. Yep. Because it feels like, oh, I just, you know, I, I'm thinking in my head, I just told you everything and now you're using it against me. Yep. Type, yeah. Type. But see, here's the thing. You know, most people are followers by nature. Mm -hmm. They need to be led. So you, you, you got to lead them. You know, you, you got to show up as the leader and you got to be able to say, look, hey, Jerry, 20 minutes ago, you told me that, you know, there are many instances to where, you know, you need someone to take care of your, your, your children so you can go out there and do your job, right? Yes. And there's been many instances where you just couldn't show up to work. I'm just curious. Do you lose money when that happens? Yeah, I do. Okay. Potentially you lose my job. Okay. What, what else do you lose? Besides that, you lose your peace of mind? A little bit. Yes, I do. You, you worry about your kids? I do. You get into a bad mood? I start the day off wrong. Okay, probably take it out on your children and your wife, et cetera? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay, and making this move will resolve all of that, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Okay, so do you want to resolve all of that? Yeah, that's my goal. I want okay, to do well, that. The only way we're going to reach the goal is to take action. Mm -hmm. So the first action step is for you to hire me tonight. So I can go out there and do my job, sell your home as fast as I possibly can, get you as much money as I possibly can, get you to San Diego, give you the peace of mind that you want, and hopefully you get a promotion in the process. Ultimately, that is what you are wanting, right? That is what I want. Good. Then go ahead and hire me right now. I'll make sure that happens. Fair enough? That's pretty fair. What, what is the salesmanship in that? We're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. what, if you really care about people, Jerry, if you really care about people and you really believe that who you are is the solution, then sometimes that's who you got to become. Mm. Because if you're just going to be the nice guy from the beginning of the presentation to the end of the presentation, guess what? Nice people finish? Last. Sometimes. Yeah. In... Look, when you're, when you're competing for business, mm -hmm. again, if you know you are the best option, you got to do what you got to do. You got to know when to, you know, take, you know, the pen and stick it through their heart so they can feel their pain and make that decision. And obviously, I teach you how to do all of that in a very ethical manner, mm -hmm. not in a way to just get the listing, but get the listing only when you know you are really the best option and you really can help these people out. Mm -hmm. That's the only time. Yes, I agree. Okay. So we got to reconnect people back to their, their motivation all the time. So look, here's, here's what showed up for me so far in this conversation. Number one, I love the fact that you guys are thinking about this business as a business. Mm -hmm. You understand that there's systems that need to put in place and you're actually putting in the time to put those systems in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second thing that showed up for me is that, you know, you track all your numbers every single day, but maybe you're just not crunching the numbers and maybe taking a look at the numbers on a weekly basis for that week and then adjusting the numbers for that month and then for the quarter and for the year to date. That, these are things I'd be taking a look at because, you know, maybe you went on, you know, maybe in the month of September, maybe in the month of September, Jerry, you're mm -hmm. just going to go on four listing appointments. Maybe. I don't know what your numbers are, but let's say you're going to go on four listing appointments. But maybe out of those four listing appointments, you only take one listing mm -hmm. from those four listing appointments. But then again, you got three people that called you back and said, come list me. See, your ratios for this month are 100%. They're not mm -hmm. 25%. Your, your, your ratios for, for that month is 25%. But by the law of averages, for that month, they're 100%. I see. You know what I mean? We can't just take a look because that's what happens in a lot, of, a lot of people. They take a look at the numbers and they say, oh, shit, I'm, I'm in a slump or whatever. You got to take a look at the averages. Okay. So better track your numbers. Do you got a tracking form for that, by the way, or no? For the whole year or no? Yeah, I do. Okay. If, if, if you're happy with it, then start using it. And if you want to take a look at another one, I'll be more than happy to send you the one that I give to my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Uh, if you want to compare that to yours or whatever. Yeah, I'll be open to that. Okay. So we'll shoot that off to you a little bit later on today. Okay. And then you can take a look at it and see if better than what you got. Maybe it's not. Whatever. Use yeah, yeah. Whatever. Just use one. Okay? Okay. Uh, also, uh, what showed up is that you got to reconnect people emotionally. 
you know, to their why at the listing piece, there's a why you are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's got to be, that's got to be addressed. Okay. That's got to be addressed. And uh, last but not least is to make sure that you take on the role of, you know, possibly um, seeing if it makes any difference if you pre-qualify the sellers versus your assistant pre-qualifying the sellers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that eventually every single team, when they get to the point to where they're the dominant force in the marketplace and their marketing is so magnetic that the leads come to them versus them having to always go out there and get the leads, then having somebody else uh, pre-qualify them uh, would definitely be the ideal thing to do because most sellers would have already made up their mind that they're going to do business with you prior to you even showing up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm curious to find out, this didn't come up in our conversation. Are you sending out a pre-listing package to your sellers, anything to get to know you before you even show up or anything like that? Yes. Um, all my, all my clients, all my potential clients, um, they, they all get an email um, with, it's pretty much the pre-listing package in an email form. Mm -hmm. if, if they don't have email, then I'll send them. I have actually have one right here. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah, so I just send them out. Um, you know, it's a, it's a brief CMA with our package here. Okay. Send it on out. It's going to send out today. Um, Ooh. so yeah, they, they do that. And, um, we're very, um, I'm very big. Well, we are, we're very big on, on email marketing. Yeah, so ev everyone is um, in our database is not only are they getting a pre-listing package, but they're also getting the five steps that you should, you should do when selling a home and okay. send them a video. Okay. Is that one video? One video. Okay. So here's, here's another thing, because I know you guys are big on video. I've seen your videos and the quality mm -hmm. of your videos is way better than most people's quality of videos. I think you guys do a good job with that. One thing I would love to see you do it because I know you guys are coachable and you guys would definitely take this on. Mm -hmm. is I would love for you to have like a page on your website. Okay. Or maybe a hidden page on your website, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. It says pretty much why list with us. Okay. And in that, what I would do is I would take the content minus the CMA, the content of your pre-listing package, and I would turn that into videos. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Because before you even show up to the listing appointment, they would have seen you, heard you, and have been already programmed by you through your videos mm -hmm. or when you show up. So yeah. I would love, I'd love for you uh, to do that. We haven't done that in our training program, but that is going to be part of listingsondemand.com because we're still putting that together right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be samples will be in there as well too. But I think that's a very, very, very powerful point. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now. I'm trying to see if I have it. Um, we do, we do have it. I think we need to send that, e that website a little more. Yeah. Just make it, make it organized. Step number one, step number two, step number three, step number four, step number five, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. That's what I would do. Or maybe even if it's just three videos. Okay. You know, one that addresses, you know, why people list their home with you, you know, because of blank and what does that equal more money? And here's what you do to get up more money. One equals a fast sale, and here's what you do to get them a fast sale. And one equals a, a hassle-free, you know, transaction, peace of mind transaction, and here's what you do. So mm -hmm. by the time you show up, you've already shown them what you do to get their home sold quickly, what you do to get them top dollar, and what you do to make sure that for them it's a hand, it's it's an almost hundred percent hands-free transaction. Everything's taken care of, and they're gonna get peace of mind. Right. That's I think not... that, I think that would also help out your conversions big time. Okay. That sounds, that sounds fair, and uh, we'll, we'll jump on that for sure. Beautiful. Any questions for me? Anything we didn't address? Anything specifically you um, more help no, on? That's, that's it. I, something, came up to my, something came to mind right now, but doesn't – I'm not – I was taking all these notes. So, yeah, that's, that's it right now. It's just I, I need to get comfortable again with asking those crucial questions and having crucial conversations. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much what, I'm, what I took from it is, is stop being um, – soft and and if i know that i'm gonna i can get them there i need to believe it and then go for the close yeah you know me and my wife were having a conversation last night okay and you know we're talking about like the personality types etc and she said who do you think you are okay and i said you know uh 
not just ba- not just based on what I believe I am, but based on the category that people have given me, is the chameleon. Hmm. Okay. And, and I say that that right there would be the best absolute thing that you should be, everybody should be working on, is how do you become a chameleon? And I say that like, you know, with love and, you know, authenticity and, you know, with, you know in an ethical way. Mm-hmm. When you're able to blend in with anyone, anywhere, anytime, this is when you really create magic. Hmm. You know, I really appreciate this call. I really do. I went, I've been going away from a lot of things that I, that I knew work. I really appreciate that. Good. I'm, I'm glad. And look, look at the way it showed up. I mean, you were, this wasn't even, this is, this conversation is a meant to be conversation because you know, 40 minutes ago, you and I didn't know we we're going to be having this conversation. And we, okay. are, we are having this conversation. Yeah. So I appreciate you raising your hand and saying, hey, I'm going to put myself out there and, you know, have this conversation. I think there's a lot of people that are going to benefit from the things you shared and I shared combined. There's a lot of people that are going to benefit from that. And that, that's at the end of the day, that's exactly what it's all about. Yeah. Helping out as many people as we possibly can. So let's get this on, on video, on recording right now. I'm thinking this is a great conversation. I really think that if we do not share this on the Top Listing Agent Show, that we're doing our community a disservice. So do I have your permission to share this, you know, and everything that we do with the Top Listing Agent Show? Oh, yeah. Go, go for it. You can share it. Good. So we, we, will, we will be sharing that on the Top Listing Agent Show. And whatever you feel, some of the things that we talked about that you want to share on our uh, Facebook group, please do that. Okay. That sounds good. And I'll keep you updated on, on all the, the notes. Good. Please do that. And one last thing I just want to share with our audience who are either going to be listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube or inside the Facebook group. Uh, Listings on Demand is basically the number one program that sponsors everything that I do. And just wanted to let you know that the price of the program is going to go up by $250 on Sunday night. It is a complete uh, course from the A to the Z for everything real estate related. Uh, so if you need help with mindset, if you need help with, uh, you know, lead generation, if you need help with skill sets, if you need help with systems, everything is there. You can get all the details at listingsondemand.com. Uh, and uh, with that said, Jerry, thank you very much, brother. Let's stay in touch. And, uh, you know, we're local. We got to get together sometime. Yeah, let's do it. We're not we that far off. Let's make sure that we get together sometime in the next 30 days. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, Chatty. Thank you, guys. Take care. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching and or listening to this episode of the Top Listing Region Show. This episode has been sponsored and brought to you by listingsondemand.com. I'll see you in the next episode next week. Thank you.